Okay, so we are ready for the Northwest Coast. Um, you don't necessarily need the reading pulled up, just this video is good enough. I'm actually going to go back and forth and fill in the study chart with you on this video, so you should just be able to go with what we have. Um, but the first thing that we're going to look at is our map, so make sure you're on the map side of your paper. And if I look at my map here, uh, this is called the Northwest Coast because all of the tribes were right there up in the northwest of North America, and they were right along the coast. So if we're looking at our map here, it's going to be number one. So I am going to take an orange and I'm going to color in the square. So if you don't have an orange, make sure that you grab an orange. You can pause the video right here if you don't have an orange. And we're going to color that in. Again, I'm using my computer, so kind of bear with me on this. And then we're going to type in, or you, I'm going to type in, you're going to write Northwest Coast for number one. And I want to point out for the northwest coast on the map that it is just right along the coastline. So it is not, um, it's not a huge portion of land. It's not like the other groups that we've kind of seen where they're taking up like a lot of space, a lot of area. This is um, a lot longer of an area. But we're going to go ahead and make this line a little bit thicker and then hope that helps them. Yeah, here we go. So we're just going to color this in right here along the coast. Obviously yours is going to look much better than mine, but there's the orange. So if you need to pause this video here for a second so you can finish filling that out, that's fine. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the study chart. So for the northwest coast in the study chart, I'm going to change this back. Here we go. Okay. Uh, northwest coast is in between the southwest and the southeast. So it's the fourth one down. We're gonna leave the Arctic for tomorrow. So the bottom one you can leave, but we're gonna do this one. And just to remind ourselves again, we are looking for transportation, how they got from place to place, food, shelter, where they lived, um, the environment, what the land and the earth was like, um, and the weather, and then finally other facts, important facts. And I had a couple people ask me what this picture was up here. And this picture actually goes with the Northwest Coast group and that will make more sense here in just a minute but let's get back into the northwest coast so uh, the northwest coastal region is home to a lot of tribes there's some tribes called the Haida, the chinooks the macaws and every year guys i look up how to pronounce this tribe and i never remember i always say the quadal i think is how i say that that may not be right so if you get finished with this you can look up the pronunciation of it but I just always call it the K tribe because I struggle to remember um, and yesterday we talked about this a lot of the tribes that we've talked about in the groups that we talked about so far had some sort of democracy which is where like people um, all people had a say in the government this group did not they did not have democracy um, instead the wealthy people ruled the clan so the more money you had the more power you had um, and that made generosity really highly valued. Generosity just means when somebody is, um, when they give things away, when you're generous with your money and the, the, um, the items and the materials that you have. And the reason that generosity was really focused on is because you had to have money to be generous. If you don't have much, it's really difficult to give things away. So the wealthier somebody was, the more power they had in the region and the way they showed that they were wealthy was by being generous and giving things away. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute because that's going to go with uh, one of the parties that they have. So they had a lot of resources. Uh, the last two groups that we talked about didn't have a ton of resources. This area was chock full of them. Um, they had mild winters and summers. It was often cool and damp, and that helped plants grow and thrive. There were lots of rivers, lakes. Obviously, they were there on the coast, so they had lots of coastal waters. This was a great water for, or source of water for people and animals that they hunted. It provided a place to fish and other aquatic. Aquatic just means water-drilling animals to live. Uh, vast forest that animals could make homes in. So because this area was so rich in natural resources, it was really easy for people to live in this area. They got to be hunters, gatherers, fishermen. Uh, and also, since this area was so rich in natural resources, this is a big deal for this group, they didn't have a need for agriculture. 
Um, so when they say they didn't have a need for agriculture, it means they didn't have to farm. They literally didn't have to plant things because things already grew so well in this area. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, that's pretty giving of Mother Nature, if we were to say, um, the fact that they didn't have a need for it because it already grew there just because of the weather and uh, the climate. Pretty crazy. So that uh, that being said, we can um, stop real quick and add some things here. So we haven't talked about travel, but we did talk about things that they could eat. So we know that they had animals to hunt. Um, they had, really we can't even say crops. They had, um, how do we want to say that? Definitely were fishermen, right? They could, uh, they had lots of animals in the water, right? So fish, um, let's say fruits and veggies instead of, um, crops because they didn't have to grow anything. These were things that were just already on the land, which is pretty cool. Uh, lots of natural resources. So here where we talk about the environment, we could say it was definitely mild. The winters and the summers were mild. Um, let's see, cool and damp. Okay. So we could say cool. Actually, I don't want to put that in the same text box. Here we go. Cool. We'll make this a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, lots of water around. Lots of different types of water was was there, so that's good. Uh, what else do we want to say? Just lots of uh, natural resources, right? Oh, forest, vast forest. So we want to make sure that we add that to here. Um, I think we add no democracy for, let me spell democracy right, there we go, um, for other information because that was important. Really all of the other groups so far have shown, um, some sort of democracy where like people, you know, kind of had a say in things. This was one of the only groups that doesn't. Um, the group that we'll talk about tomorrow has a different form of that. Um, but not having a democracy, so wealth ruled. So the more money you had, the more wealth you had, that's the more power that you had. So the wealthy people ruled the clans. That was kind of a big deal. Um, let's see. They, like we just said, they were known for its abundance of food, right? Animals roam through the forest. They migrate through the forest and along the waterways. So people hunted lots of animals. They had rabbit. They had deer. They had elk. They um, fished and hunted in nearby water. So when they say hunted, it means when you're fishing is one thing, but they had bigger animals that were in the area that they would use to um, or that they would kill. So salmon, seals even, Whales were some of their favorite prey, and whales were big, kind of like how we talked about the bison was a big deal for the people um, on the Great Plains. Whales were the same way for this group, um, and they even used a harpoon-type spear to catch them. So I've got some pictures of some harpoon-type spears. We even see some of the people that would have been in. Um, we'll talk about the boats here in just a minute, but um, some examples of things that they may have used to catch those whales are to go whaling, which would have been really difficult, especially when we look at the boat. Let's actually go ahead and look at that now. They had boats that they called dugouts, and literally the reason they called them dugouts is because they would just take a huge tree trunk and dig out the middle to sit in the boat. Um, there were lots of different types, so they looked a little bit different than like the canoes that we had seen on some of the others. Um, like I said, they would just dig out the middle of a huge tree trunk. They had a lot of cedar trees, which I guess I should show you. Cedar trees. Cedar trees were really common in the forests around here. Almost look like a big Christmas tree in a way. Um, but they would grow huge. So they could use the trunks of these cedar trees as their dugouts, as their canoes. I could not imagine going out in a small dugout boat and catching a whale. That would be so incredibly difficult. And it was really risky 
Uh, sometimes it would take days to catch a whale because they'd have to keep um, track of it. Uh, but it would provide so many things, just like the bison did for the Great Plains people. They could get food, rope, skin for, contain um, skin for containers. They used the fat of the whale for food. They also used it for oil, so like to light lamps and those kinds of things. Um, and like we said, they already, they used those cedar wood to make dugouts to catch the food. They also traveled on foot to gather foods. Um, they had berries that they could gather, um, bushes from, or bushes that they could gather berries from. There were shrimp and animal eggs and oysters in the water that they didn't really have to hunt. They could just gather up. Uh, people created some beautiful baskets that were uniquely woven. Let me see. So this one even shows it's got the whale that's decorated on the side. Like we said, the whales were really important to this group. Um, so art was still an important thing. So let's pause here and add a little bit more. So transportation, we found two things, right? On foot and by boat. And remember, they were called dugouts. So let's call them by their actual name. So those dugout, I might put dugout canoes. So the dugout canoes, right? We still haven't heard about um, shelter yet. Animals, fish, fruits, and veggies. We've got all of that right. We could add, I think, maybe add whales to this because they were so important. That's probably worth noting. So whales being a main source of food and other things. Okay. Also, if I'm going too fast on these and you can't fill them in, you can always pause the video write in what you need and then join back in. Uh, okay, since they didn't have to go far for food, they were able to make permanent homes too. Uh, most of them lived in long rectangular buildings called longhouses. So we talked about longhouses with um, the Eastern Woodlands, I believe. Which ones had the longhouses? Let's go back and look. Uh, yeah, the Eastern Woodlands had the longhouses, right? These are slightly different. So we talked about those cedar trees. They would actually cut these huge planks from the cedar trees and create their longhouses that way. Um, this is also a picture of what like the inside may have looked like. So it kind of uh, probably reminds you a little bit of the cabins that you stayed in at camp. So it was like one big long room and they would have like the bunks on the sides. They also had an opening at the top so that way they could have fires inside to keep warm because it would get cool at times. But those were... Um, the longhouses. So they looked slightly different than the others because they had different materials to build them from, right? They had several families that would live in one longhouse. So we can add that to our shelter. Longhouse. There we go. And shelter. All right. So like all North American tribes, they had a lot of traditional beliefs and customs. They actually had a medicine man named or called a shaman, and they were known for controlling spiritual forces. So, um, and they actually still practice today. So they believed that if somebody was sick, that it wasn't like a virus or a bacteria like we think of now. They were thinking it was um, an upset spirit. And so the shamans would perform different ceremonies and things to try to help relieve that sick person of those spirits. Um, the Hyena people were from the Northwest coast and the Hyenas were either born ravens or eagles. They own certain crests that represent their clan. So that's kind of an interesting fact. And they hold the right to display these and the members would construct totem poles of cedar wood. Um, they would carve animals and other symbols and each symbol had a meaning or represented something in the creator's life. And each carving has a three part story. So the past the present, and the future. Only the creator of the pole was permitted to tell their story, and sometimes they chose to keep it a secret. Uh, totems were used for display, personal identity, and ceremonies, and since these tribes had no written language, the stories on these poles uh, were also told orally, which means they didn't write any of the stories down. The only way you would know the story of the totem pole is if the creator told you their story. Um, totem poles could get up to 40 feet, and they were found near the entrance of a lot of the homes. So these were some examples. You've probably seen something that's similar to a totem pole before. So each of these, um, I, I love the artwork of the Northwest Coast. I think some of the, uh, 
the pictures that they come up with are just so incredibly cool and fascinating. So um, also this is something called a Thunderbird. We're going to make our own totem poles or decorate our own totem poles sometime soon. Um, but each of these faces, each of these sections would represent something new or a part of that person's life, which I think is really cool. It's a cool way to like share the story about your life by, you know, through pictures and having this big thing that was out in front of your home. Um, there are all kinds. I love this one. This is like a little beaver, right? We talked about those types of animals. I was trying to see one, if I could find one that was a whale. I think those are really cool. There we go. Aren't those cool? We said the whales were super important. So they would normally, you would normally find whales on totem poles. Here he is down here. How cool is that? Right. And they would all uh, just mean something different. I think that's so, that's so cool. Um, let's add that. I think totem poles, that's a big one, right? Let's add that into other facts. So we have the totem poles. If you wanted to put shamans, you could put that over here in um, other information too. But I think the idea of the totem pole is just so cool. Especially when you think of they're using materials that would last years and years and years. Meaning that obviously some of these are still around that were created a long, long time ago. So their stories get to live on even though they didn't write them down. That's so cool to me. Uh, finally, when people were ready to raise or honor a totem pole, they often held a potlatch. And a potlatch is a special party. Um, this is a picture of a potlatch that would have happened not too terribly long ago. Um, remember we said it, that K tribe, like the Coatl tribe, right? So a potlatch is just, and there's some, um, illustrations of some potlatches too. It's just this giant party, um, that would last for several days. There'd be this huge feast. And like I said, the wealthier the person, the more power they held. And they, so they loved being generous and giving things away. And so if you were invited to a potlatch, the, uh, the host, the person that invites you would end up giving you lots of gifts because they wanted to show off all of their money and all their power. Um, so invited guests would receive many lavish gifts. So lavish means like expensive, important, right? Uh, that Coatl tribe or the K clan is another Northwest Coast tribe, and they still practice potlatches today. So potlatches celebrate many events. They can celebrate status, wealth, marriage, important people, loved one, leadership, people's relationship to animal spirits. Like we said on the totem poles, you could see a lot of animals. They were very grateful for the animals that uh, lived in their in their area. Uh, their songs, stories, dances, and ceremonies honor the things in nature. For example, they honor animals, salmon, cedar trees, and rivers. And so these potlatches would be held for special occasions. But the the cool thing is it's almost like backwards of a birthday party, right? You go to a birthday party, you bring the host a gift. For potlatches, it was the opposite. So like the host would give you gifts for coming to their party. It's kind of cool. So I think potlatch probably needs to go here too. Let's add that to other information. Okay, so if I went through something too fast, uh, make sure that you pause, like I said, and make sure you have everything filled in or you can rewatch parts of the video if you need to. So you should have the map completed and you should have the Northwest Coast section filled in. Um, once you have done that, make sure that you put this paper in a special place that you will be able to find because we only have one more group to go through before we're getting ready to turn this in. So big points. This is important. Make sure it goes and is put somewhere else safe. And then you can go ahead and move on to the next page in this module.